Happy sunshine, boys and girls. Lunacy's back here with another, well, I don't know, a collection of ideas video. I don't know if I'd really call it an update because there's not, there's really not much information. It's 8.47 p.m. Pacific Time, August 22nd, 2017. Over here on the IUV website, there's one update from today. <clears throat> this is from Yusuf. I, I believe that this is Terran. Let me, let me get this a little bigger for you guys. Huh. Uh, good morning, everyone. I just had a quick call from Heather to let me know, to, to let me and everyone know, <clears throat> that she wasn't, was not going to be transferred today. Well, what? I don't know why my screen just jumped like that, guys. That's strange. It was a very short call because she said that they were ordered this morning to clean up themselves and their cells. The director of the jail is coming to visit today. She said her inmates that have been there for a while told her that that had never happened before. She will call later when the visit is over, meaning the, the director of the jail visit. Um, I, I mean, that's interesting. You know, so far all the information that's come out of BZ and Terran has checked out. I don't have any reason to doubt this at all. Uh, very interesting that the, that the director of the Urban County Detention Center is coming to visit today and that the rest of the inmates that have been there a while had said that that's never happened. Th this is a huge observation. I don't know what meaning to assign to that observation, but wow, the director of the jail, that's interesting. All right, we left off on page 66 of the identity hearing transcript. We don't have that much more to go through, so let's just get to it. So thank you, Your Honor. Judge Debbie says, I'll hear your response. Your Honor, we submit that the government has not met its burn it burden on the identity issue in this case. That's all that they've presented was Agent Still's testimony, which was third hand as far as the identification, the identification procedures are concerned. Agent Steele testified that he had not even seen the individual that's here in court today until Monday, and that the he wasn't present at the time of arrest. He wasn't present at the time the alleged crime on which the indictment was based. So there's no identification that was made by any of the victims alleged in the incident. In fact, all we have is a, and I understand that hearsay is admissible in this proceeding, but it is hearsay nonetheless. It's going to be unbelievably unreliable. And what's most concerning to us is the fingerprint report that the government introduced as exhibit number four. There was no indication at all about what, if any, proficiency testing the examiner had done to see whether or not the test was, in fact, accurate. Although they said there was a second level of identification, the person who did the identification was never identified in the report. So we can't certainly rely on that report. And of course, that's the report that's generated by the government. We have not had a chance to fully confront the accuracy of that report. <clears throat> wow. Bose is saying a mouthful here, guys. He's talking about the fingerprint report. I mean, it doesn't even say who the fingerprint ident identification examiners are. You know, we've got 
a fake warrant and now we've got a, a suspicious fingerprint report. I, if you're a if you're a fingerprint examiner and you're writing a report on an examination that you've done, you're going to put your name on that report. And if you get somebody to double check your, your work, you're going to put their name on your report too because, hey, this work was double checked. Great. By who? Oh, by Bob Smith. Okay, great. Now I know where to go to. This is, all this is pointing out here is that, wow, the government doesn't have jack shit to stand on. And then the court says, well, do you acknowledge that during your cross-examination of the agent, you asked him no questions concerning any of those matters? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I did ask him a few questions about that. And again, the evidence that the court has, though it is the report, he was reading from a report that he did not prepare by an individual that there's no indication that they have any direct contact with that individual. We don't know what the qualifications of that individual was. We don't know what education level was, what type of certification that individual possessed at the time he made. Oh, we got this double hyphen here. That's, that's my favorite, isn't it? Judge Debbie's got to interrupt him. My question is, do you acknowledge that you had opportunity to ask Agent Steele those questions, but did not? Look at this. There's only one reason for Judge Deborah to ask this question of Mr. Bose. And that's because she wants it in the court record that she gave him an opportunity and, and he did not ask questions. And so this is going to be her reasoning, her basis, her support for why she's going to make the decision that she makes. So Mr. Bose continues, right, because it's the government's burden to prove that those reports are reliable. We couldn't stop them from coming in, but we can certainly attack them now at the time for the argument stage here. And we're pointing out to the court that there are deep flaws in that particular report which I think the government would maintain as their strongest piece of evidence. We, we not do know, probably Barbara DeVico has got some words flipped around, or I don't know. We not do know. So I'm, I'm just going to edit this in real time, say we do not know where the fingerprints came from, whether or not those, other than what's in the report, He's just saying we don't know where the fingerprints came from that are in the report. And again, without knowing more about the author of the report, which we don't know either, the court should not be able to make the finding that the report is sufficiently reliable to support an identification finding by this court, especially when you have a situation where you have not the arresting officer, not the officer that was present who spoke to the complainants at the time that they made the complaint to law enforcement. And he only makes this identification of the individual who is sitting right here in court. And just so the record is clear, Ms. Tucci is the only person who is sitting at council table wearing an orange jumpsuit. That's pretty suggestive identification procedure that was done here in court. So I don't think that the court should give it that much weight. So when you have a situation where you have a report that we don't know anything about the authorship as far as the fingerprints, coupled with an identification that we believe is not sufficient to make an identification that the court should deny the government's request for, we would submit that the government hasn't met its burden in this identification proceeding. Mr. Bose, this is a question I will ask you. I will ask you as well, Ms. Walters. I neglected to do that earlier in the proceeding. What is your contention, Mr. Bose, regarding the applicable standard of proof? I want to point this out here, page 69, lines 12 through 16. Judge Deborah is making sure that they're all of the same understanding and on the same playing field uh, regarding what the standard of proof is 
for the decision that they're there to make that day. Mr. Bose says, Your Honor, it's my understanding that probable cause is the standard of proof in identity proceedings. And for those of you who don't quite know what probable cause is, you, you've heard this in, you know, Hollywood movies, television shows, um, but a lot of people aren't quite up on exactly uh, what it covers. Probable cause is a level of reasonable belief <clears throat> based on facts that can be articulated that is required to sue a person in civil court or to arrest and prosecute a person in criminal court. Before a person can be sued or arrested and prosecuted, the civil plaintiff or police and prosecutor must possess enough facts that would lead a reasonable person to believe that the claim or charge is true. Probable cause standard, the probable cause standard is more important in criminal law than it is in civil law because it is used in criminal law as a basis for searching and arresting persons and depriving them of their liberty. Civil cases can deprive a person of property, but they cannot deprive a person of liberty. In civil court, a plaintiff must possess probable cause to levy a claim against a defendant. If the plaintiff does not have probable cause for the claim, she may later face a malicious prosecution suit brought by the defendant. Furthermore, lack of probable cause to support a claim means that the plaintiff does not have sufficient evidence to support the claim and the court will likely dismiss it. So the standard of proof here for making a decision in this identity hearing is probable cause. Right here. Probable cause is the level of reasonable belief based on the facts that can be articulated, that means spoken out, enumerated, that is required to sue a person in civil court or to arrest a, and prosecute a person in criminal court. Reasonable belief based on the facts. What would a reasonable person think in this situation? You all are pretty much reasonable people that are following this. What do you think? Is there probable cause to make an identity ruling in this case? Very well. Ms. Walters, I will hear your reply. First, may I ask whether you are in agreement that the standard of proof is probable cause? Yes, Your Honor. The government, that is the one thing that the government and the defense agree on. And the government takes that information from the U.S. v. Perkins, 433 F. D. 2, 1182, which is a case from 1970, which indicates that probable cause is the applicable standard. So here, she's being like teacher's pet. Oh yeah, probable cause is the standard, and that comes from you know, this court case in this section from this year, and this is what the, this is what happened. This is what came out of it. Very well. That has been the court's assumption. I simply wanted to determine whether counsel are in agreement that that is the standard. <clears throat> so now here on page 70, lines 5 through 8, we get the reason that she asked that question on page 69, line 12 through 16. Who wants to make sure they're all on the same page? Miss Walters continues. Yes, Your Honor. However, with respect to the competency of the government's evidence, the government would first note that there were no questions asked of Special Agent Steele with respect to the fingerprint report. 
And as Agent Steele testified, that report with, was authored at his request. <laughs> and there was lengthy questions on direct as to the fact that there was specific items used to reach the conclusion in that particular report. He couldn't even explain it, guys. Go back and watch that video. I can't remember which pay or which which video that was in, but but we talked about his testimony. It was it was gobbledygook, including fingerprints obtained from the defendant on two different dates of arrest. Those exhibits are in fact part of the government's exhibit. So any claim that there's a chain of custody at issue or the origin of the report is somehow skewed or stained, the government would strenuously oppose given the documents that have been entered in evidence and given the documents that have been previously provided to the defense as to that fingerprint report. So there's no basis to question that, it, that this is a fabricated report or that the items used to reach the conclusions in the report are somehow faulty. Additionally, the government would note that Special Agent Steele's ability to identify the defendant is clear based on his review of videos of the defendant. Based on his review of criminal database information populated with respect to prior arrests of this defendant, including photographic evidence, date of birth, all of these things that were elicited on direct examination of the agent. So there was in no way any suggestivity in his identification of Ms. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe in court today because he had a very firm basis on what she looked like and the government would argue what she sounded like when he attempted or had a short phone call conversation with her prior to coming in court today. Well, did he attempt or had? And how... How is a phone call going to help him to identify her visually other than, hey, I, I, I know what her voice sounds like. There, there was no testimony about this phone call. They, they, were, they didn't play the phone call in court. They just said, oh, there's a phone call. We've admitted the recording and evidence. It, was there a recording? They didn't even say there was a recording. How do we know that there was this phone call? And the government would note that he previously provided that information to the grand jury on July 18th, 2017, and they issued an indictment. So I believe Special Agent Steele's ability to identify this defendant based on his, his investigation is also clear. The government would note thirdly and lastly that as the government stated in its argument just a short while ago, Ms. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe was also identified by an independent civilian witness prior to her arrest. What's their name? That was never brought into these hearings. How can you, how can you just, oh, hey, uh, there was an independent civilian that was at the scene and they identified uh, Heather Ann Tucci. Well, if she could identify Heather Ann Tucci, how the hell can you claim that she's independent? What's going on here, guys? You gotta give a name for this person. And that evidence is in the record as well. Special Agent Steele testified that he received a call from the United States Secret Service who had been alerted to the defendant and was aware of the warrant and notified Special Agent Steele upon which a law enforcement team encountered her at the hotel. Who's this special agent? Who, who is the Secret Service? Doesn't even say an agent. Received a call from the whole service, I guess, who had been alerted to the defendant and was aware of the warrant. They just don't know how to properly handle a warrant and arrest a person. They got a call, Special Agent Steele in Knoxville. They inquired where she was and a separate civilian witness said that she wasn't in the room, but she was in, a, in the area and then pointed her out. Who are all these people that are doing all this stuff? This is just he said, he said, she said. This is like, this is like what Fox News does <clears throat> when they want to get a propaganda, when they want you to believe their lie. They say, oh, experts agree, comma, <clears throat> insert the propaganda item. 
Some people say, comma, insert your propaganda item. People on the streets are wondering, comma, insert your propaganda item. They don't say who it is. Thank you very much, Ms. Walters. Mr. Bose, sorry, I saw you rising. Is there something further? Well, Your Honor, I just want to make sure that the court understands our argument. The argument is not whether or not this evidence was well. <clears throat> the court made a ruling that the court is going to accept the exhibits that the government, specifically of exhibit number four, which is fingerprint evidence. That doesn't necessarily mean that the court makes a finding that it's in fact reliable enough to meet the government's burden and identity hearing. So admissibility does not equate to reliability. I, I think this and here on line six between burden and identity should be an at to meet the government's burden at identity hearing. That makes more sense to me. But admissibility does not equate to reliability. Like, like poor, poor Bo's here. <clears throat> He's seen a bullshit report get entered into evidence. Admitted into the case. And he's like, hey, it doesn't self validate. You can't take judicial notice of that. You're going to take judicial notice of, of, of a bullshit report, a bullshit warrant, but you're not going to take judicial notice of the 286 pages of UCC filings that are on file, unrebutted. Since 2011, 2012? Like, poor Bose. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on here. He's just like, well, let me double check, Judge. I just want to make sure that you understand our position. And our position is that notwithstanding our objection, which we not only have, do we have a standing objection to the exhibit coming in, we lost that objection. We still maintain it. The court still has to make a further finding whether or not the report is, in fact, reliable. And that's where our arguments are going towards. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Bose. Having considered the full extent of evidence offered during the course of this proceedings and the arguments of counsel, the court finds that the U.S. attorney has offered abundant, credible, reliable evidence taken as a whole to compel the finding that the individual now before the court is the same individual named in the warrant and the indictment filed in the court in Eastern District of Tennessee. The court's finding is made by the standard that counsel agrees is applicable standard, and that is probable cause standard. The court has fully considered the arguments made on behalf of counsel for Ms. Tucci Giraffe and finds that the evidence has offered simply does not support the arguments. In other words, there is no factual basis for any of them. Accordingly, the court will sign the order of commitment of Ms. Tucci Giraffe to the Eastern District of Tennessee for proceedings in that district and will order that Ms. Tucci Giraffe be held without bond pending her appearance in that district. Mr. Bose, Your Honor, we're requesting that the court order that we will be done on an expedited basis. As the court knows, Ms. Tucci has been in custody in this matter for, for almost longer than a week at this point. So to the extent that she can get to Tennessee as quickly as possible, where hopefully she'll be able to revisit her bail determination, we'll make that request. Judge Debbie says, we'll note forthwith on commitment. However, I believe it's important for the record to reflect in response to your concern about the period of time that Ms. Tucci Giraffe has been held. The reason for the period of detention for the last four days was, of course, that the court granted Ms. Tucci Giraffe's request for continuance. The government was ready to proceed on Monday, which the court noted was the third day, would have been the third day of Ms. Tucci Giraffe's detention. We all assumed that that would be her reasonable maximum period for such a time of detention. Counsel for the government was prepared to proceed. The witness was present and indeed the court offered the opportunity 
to at least begin the proceeding while other matters were being addressed. The court did not begin the proceeding solely because of your objection on behalf of Ms. Tucci Giraffe to doing so. So the record should reflect that any delay beyond Monday, July 31st was occasioned by Ms. Tucci Giraffe. Oh, well, I guess our response to that is because Ms. Tucci Giraffe had the Hobson's choice of going forward with a lawyer that she felt she was not comfortable with or whether or not she was going to hire a lawyer pro se. So it does suggest that she actually voluntarily, but there was, a, there was an issue that had to get resolved for Miss Tucci Giraffe. Well, let's, uh, let's look up what Hobson's choice is here. Well, let's just open a new tab. Hobson's choice. A Hobson's choice is a free choice in which only one thing is offered. Because a person may refuse to accept what is offered, the two options are taking it or taking nothing. In other words, one may take it or leave it. The phrase is said to have originated with Thomas Hobson, a livery stable owner in Cambridge, England, who offered customers the choice of either taking the horse in his stall nearest the door or taking none at all. So, well, I guess our response to that is because Miss Tucci Giraffe had the Hobson's choice of going forward with a lawyer that she felt was not comfortable with or whether she was going to hire a lawyer or be pro se. And, and you hear how the court had offered that they could indeed proceed while other matters were being addressed. Line 10 here, right here. And indeed the court offered the opportunity to at least begin the proceeding while other matters were being addressed. Like, like, oh, they've just bent over backwards for the highest and best purposes of the person arrested here, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. They haven't done shit. This is a railroad job. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Bose. If there's anything further on behalf of the United States, Ms. Walters? No, Your Honor. Very well. Thank you very much. Counsel, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, please return with the marshal. Proceedings adjourned at 2.24 p.m. And, and here we go. We'll cover this again. The certificate of the official court reporter, that's Barbara DeVico, isn't it, isn't it interesting how official court reporter has the same initials as optical character recognition, OCR? Like, wow, if you're into gematria, I find that, uh, I find that, hmm, pretty interesting observation. I, Barbara DeVico, certify that the foregoing is a correct transcript from the record of proceedings in the above entitled matter. She signed it four days after. So she took four days before she had this all put together. She was working from an audio recording. And if you'll note in that document, actually, let's just pull it up and I am going to highlight exactly Let's see. Well, she said, I, I, oh, right here. No, that's Bose talking about Tennessee. Oh, here we go. The court right here on line eight on page 74. Accordingly, the court will sign the order of commitment of Miss Tucci Giraffe to the Eastern District of Tennessee for proceedings in that district and will order that Miss Tucci Giraffe be held without bond, without bond, pending her appearance in that district. So, 
if if she's ordered to go to Tennessee how come she's in Georgia how come she went from Washington DC to Virginia to Oklahoma to Georgia well I think I know why because it's a pain in the ass to try and get any strategy going when you're bumping around all over the country nobody knows where you're going next you're not even on the books on the government's online detainee locator system somebody left a comment in one of my videos and said that this technique of bumping her around the country is called dieseling and, and I get it they're wasting a lot of diesel moving her around she, she can never really get started on anything because oh we're moving you time to time to pack all your stuff up okay you're here at the new place oh you don't have any money on the commissary here you don't have email set up here you don't have mail privileges here nobody knows where you're at yet and so we gotta wait for Heather to get a phone call out when they finally let her have one and she calls Taryn or BZ gives them the pertinent information they put that information out and that's the only avenue that we have for it this entire situation is screwed up guys if you haven't watched my video from yesterday I really recommend watching it, it really highlights forgiveness and how that's applicable to crooked judges, crooked FBI agents, false warrants. Like this stuff is just shocking to a consciousness to, to realize that it's going on this blatantly in our system, in our society. And to get from where we are to something that's healthy, safe, sane for everyone involved, there's only one road that I see, and that's forgiveness. And I really break it down into its bare bones in my video yesterday. Hat J, focus on the big outcome. We're the ones that dissolve the chasm between the chattel, us, and the powers that were. Like they consider us chattel, guys. Cattle. This is all about slavery and human trafficking and keeping a deception around that. And the people that are involved in the system, I don't feel they're there by choice. They got honey trapped in there. They got blackmailed into doing this horrible behavior. And the only way that, that they're going to stop doing that is if they know that, hey, we see that you got honey trapped in there. We know that you're not doing this by a choice you're making out of your heart. All right, guys, that's enough for me for tonight. Lunacy at protonmail.com. Uh, I've got plenty of information uh, coming in. Found out what 27 Alpha is. Uh, somebody left a comment and said that they found uh, some sort of information online that Parker Still, Steel, actually Parker Still, Hayes Still, was a U.S. bankruptcy court judge and I cannot find anything on that. If you guys can find documentation that Parker Still was a U.S. bankruptcy judge, that would be super interesting to me. So send me an email, love, light, and links. Lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. 
Love you guys. Peace out. Bye-bye.